Okay, today we are looking at lesson C from unit 3, zero exponents and negative exponents. The objective, by the end of this section, you should be able to say, I can determine the answer when a base is raised to the zero power, and I can rewrite a problem that has negative exponents into one with only positive exponents. So let's start with talking about the zero power. Um, in lesson B, you learned about the quotient rule. So let's recall that because we're going to use that concept to help us understand where the zero power property comes from. So it says recall the exponent rule. When dividing and bases are the same, what do we do with the exponents? Well, according to what we learned yesterday, we would subtract the exponents. Now it says the quotient rule is what leads us to the definition of the zero product, zero power property, sorry. So if we look at the following, three squared over three squared. Now if we were to just evaluate this, three squared we know is nine, three squared we know is nine, and nine divided by nine or anything divided by itself is one. So therefore three squared divided by three squared is one. Now if we were to look at the same problem using the quotient rule, the quotient rule tells us that when we're dividing and our bases are the same, we're going to subtract the exponents. So that would be 3 to the 2 minus 2 power, which is 3 to the 0 power. So if we're evaluating this problem two different ways, and one way we get 1, and the other way we get 3 to the 0 power, that leads us to... 3 to the 0 power is 1. Again, here we evaluated it out. 9 divided by 9 is 1. Here we took the same problem, subtracted the exponents, because that's what the quotient rule tells us to do, and we get 3 to the 0 power. So 3 to the 0 power is 1. The 0 power property tells us that anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Whether it's a number or a letter, it doesn't matter. Anything to the zero power is one. So if we look at these examples, eight to the zero power is one. X to the zero power is one. Now here we have something that we looked at with the product, but this is still taking all of this and raising it to the zero power. And we said right up here, anything to the zero power is one. So that's called the zero power property. Here we examined how it came to be, and then that's what you need to know. Anything to the zero power is one. All right, we'll save the U tries, and you'll take a look at those tomorrow in class. Now let's move to the concept of negative exponents. It says, it's not considered proper to write expressions with negative exponents. As a result, we need a way to express negative exponents in a positive way. We can again use the quotient rule to illustrate how to turn negative exponents into positive exponents. So that quotient rule is going to help us again. It's very helpful in um, determining where these different properties come from. So just like we always want to reduce our fractions, the same thing is true when it comes to exponents. We always want them to be positive. We don't want to leave a negative exponent. So let's see how we can figure this out. If I look at this example, I have 3 to the 5th divided by 3 to the 3rd. So if I were to write that out, we know that 3 to the 5th, 3 to the 3rd, and anything divided by itself makes 1. So this is 1 times 1 times 1, and we're left with 3 to the 2nd power. Now notice that 3 to the second power is in the numerator or the top of our fraction. Now what if we were to flip this around? What if we were to do 3 to the third divided by 3 to the fifth? If I were to expand this out, that's 3 to the third, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, anything divided by itself makes 1, so that's 1 times 1 times 1. Notice I have 3 squared again, but this time it's in the denominator. It's in the bottom of our fraction. So we have to leave it there. We can't just move it to the top. If it's in the denominator, we have to keep it in the denominator. And we said that 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, so that's what goes in our numerator. 
If we then connect this to the quotient rule in this example, that would be 3 to the 5 minus 3 power, which is 3 squared, and that's what we came up with. In this one, if I were to do 3, and we always do the numerator minus denominator in terms of the exponents, 3 minus 5, we get 3 to the negative second power. And notice when it's a negative exponent, when we write it to make it a positive exponent, it actually ends up in the denominator or the bottom of a fraction. So 3 to the negative squared or negative 2 power is actually 1 over 3 squared, which we then would probably evaluate to be 1 9. All right, if you turn your paper over, let's kind of summarize this and then we'll look at a couple of examples. So it says to make a negative exponent positive, you must relocate it. In other words, if you have a negative exponent in the numerator, relocate it to the denominator to make it positive. If you have a negative exponent in the blank, relocate it to the numerator to make it positive. Well, we have to think relocating, if we're relocating it to the numerator, it must be in the denominator. Okay, so let's look at the examples. Number seven says, or let's look at the directions, write your answer using only positive exponents. So I see x to the negative fourth power, and I know that I only want to use positive exponents. So my suggestion is, whenever you are doing a problem, working through it, and you end up with a negative exponent, make a fraction bar. Because that means where it is is not working. So to make it positive, we re relocate it. This is already considered in the numerator, so if I move it to the denominator, I can make it positive, and we give it a numerator of 1. So now we have rewritten it using only positive exponents. If we look at number 8, again, I see a negative exponent, so I'm going to make a fraction bar. To make the negative exponent positive, I have to relocate it, so I'm going to move it to the denominator. My numerator is a 1. If I then evaluate, I get 1 over 25. And if you were to put this into your calculator, you would get the same answer. If you used negative 2 power and then math, enter, enter, to turn it to a fraction, you would end up with 1 25th. Okay, now in number 9, we're going to apply a couple of properties. We know that um, from the power rule, a power to a power, when they're up high, you multiply. So if I do this, I end up with 4 to the positive fourth power and x to the 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 power. Now I see a negative exponent, so I'm going to make a fraction bar. When I look at 4 to the fourth, this is a positive exponent, so it's fine exactly where it is. We're going to leave it right up top there. However, this one has a negative exponent, which means that to make it positive, we have to relocate it, so we're going to put it in the denominator to make it positive. Let's look at number 10. Number 10, again, we've got a couple of things happening here. So I have 10x squared divided by 2x to the fifth. Now what you might want to do is split up your number part and your variable part. So I could write this, let's write it underneath, as 10 divided by 2, and then I have x to the second divided by x to the fifth. Well, I know 10 divided by 2 is 5, and when I am dividing and my bases are the same, I subtract the exponent. So 2 minus 5 would give me negative 3. Now I see a negative exponent, so I make a fraction bar. Does the 5 have a negative exponent attached to it? No, it doesn't. So therefore, it doesn't need to relocate. It's fine where it is. The negative 3 power that we have here, we can't leave this as a negative 3 power. So to make it positive, we relocate it and put it in the denominator. And we end up with 5 over x to the third. All right, our last example here in number 11, I have 2 thirds to the negative 3 power. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can approach this one. I'll actually show you both ways. The first is to say that everything inside has to get raised to the negative third power. So we're going to write this as 2 to the negative third and 3 to the negative third in the denominator. So 
So we said two goes to the negative third and three goes to the negative third. Now when I look at this, I say, wait a minute, I can't have negative exponents, so I make a fraction bar and I have to relocate. To make this exponent positive, I put it in the denominator of the fraction. This one's already in the denominator, but I need to move it to make it positive. If it's already in the denominator, it can't go any lower, so its only option is to relocate it to the numerator to make it a positive exponent. 3 to the third is 27. 2 to the third is 8, so we get 27 eighths. Now, if you'll notice, what happened here is that we have two-thirds, and then after we did our work step, we ended up with three over two, which is the reciprocal, and they became positive exponents. So the other way that you can look at this is to say, if you have a fraction raised to a negative exponent, you can take the reciprocal of the fraction to the positive. So in other words, so if we want to call this option two, I can take and make it 3 over 2 to the positive third, which then is 3 to the third over 2 to the third, which is 27 eighths. So you don't have to do it both ways, but there are two possible ways that you could approach this problem. So we don't want to leave negative exponents. We relocate them to make them positive. So now you need to make sure that you go ahead and do the bottom. After watching this video, I can. After watching this video, I still don't know how to. And then to help yourself, circle any that apply. Whether you'll rewatch the video, ask a friend, ask a question in class, go to the Math Resource Center, search the topic on the internet. Don't forget, you could also sign up to see um, your teacher, one of the algebra teachers during T-Bolt time. So there's a lot of options for you to get extra help. See you tomorrow.